Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. From Edina, Minnesota, Mary Rotenberg Roberts. Something about Mary. I've been saying that for more than 25 years, <laughs> long before a comedy by the same name packed movie theaters in, in the 90s. Of course, I'm talking about Mary Rodenberg Roberts, a uh, talented lawyer, tireless advocate, and devoted friend, my devoted friend. Mary shares many, <laughs> Mary shares many similarities with the film's zany lead character played by Cameron Diaz. <laughs> A compassionate heart, a devotion to people with special needs, and a commitment to doing the right thing. For the real life, Mary, for real life Mary, no fight is too small, no cause lacking in meaning. When a man we, we served required new dentures, Mary fought to get them. When cochlear implants offered someone the opportunity to hear again, she secured funding for those too. And in a stunning victory for the people of Minnesota, Mary successfully led the legal fight against state rate cuts that would deny her own daughter and so many others the services they need. I worry about the average American, Mary, said Mary. People often don't understand that no doesn't have to mean no. There's a lot of my drive, that's a lot of my drive, she explained. That's my favorite part of the job. The job Mary has is the network's general counsel in charge of regulatory and licensing issues. For most lawyers, let alone us mere mortals, Mary's area of the law is a pit of alphabet soup quicksand. <laughs> I'm the only person who gets excited over new rules, said Mary. <laughs> She's forgotten more than we'll ever be able to learn, confirmed fellow attorney Andrea Beaudry. I don't believe we could find another lawyer in America who knows more about Medicaid and its regulations as they apply to our industries, offered Linda Dorenzo, the network's general counsel. But Mary's formidable intellect is only a slice of what makes her so extraordinary that she uses that intellect for the protection and advancement of the most vulnerable in society is certainly another. But it's Mary herself, her ability to balance the demands of a challenging job, her careful tending to personal relationships, her sharp wit, her ability to build, manage, and love unconditionally an extra special, a special family that makes Mary a ripple of hope for us all. For those of you who don't know, Mary and her husband, Rick, are the parents of 20 children. 20 children who are all learning to live with a range of challenges. And yes, I said 20. <laughs> Mary and Rick's journey with adoption began with a three-year-old boy who suffered from shaken baby syndrome. Brandon had shunts placed in his head to manage seizures but he was denied basic follow-up care. His foster parents essentially kept him in a box for three years. We saw what the system hadn't done for him, said Mary. The experience drew me in tight, and I've been there ever since. <clears throat> Case in point, when Mary realized that home health care wasn't helping Brandon with his serious challenges, she sought a TBI waiver from the state of Minnesota. They refused saying the kids were not included in the statute. As Mary likes to say, Brandon wound up with a mom that doesn't take no for an answer. 
She marched a copy of the federal statute up to the state capitol and educated the public officials <laughs> about the state's own program. Brandon became the first kid in Minnesota on the TBI waiver. Mary's other son, Ted, became the second. <laughs> After Brandon, Mary and Rick adopted again six more times. The size of their family comes from their commitment to permanency. They strive to keep sibling groups together. A group of three from Louisiana, three from Oregon, and most recently, a family of five kids from Florida found living by themselves in a tent. There were thousands and thousands of kids waiting to get out of the system, explained Mary, who has used her experience to encourage adu other adoptive parents. She also speaks to raise awareness about shaken baby syndrome. So I'm sure you're all wondering, how does she do it? One kid at a time, like everyone else, responds Mary in her understand, understated, self-depreciating manner. She admits that her battle with multiple sclerosis leaves her awake most nights. She uses that time to get things done. But for those of us who have parented far fewer than 20 children, we know there is more to the story. I was born to parents who wanted me, offered Mary. They are her inspiration. The brightest light in Mary's constellation has always been her dad, who passed away a decade ago. Richard Rodenberg was a county attorney with a quiet wisdom. I had the best dad, said Mary. He encouraged me to be anything I wanted to be. Mary looks at the future in much the same way Earl Warren did, another great lawyer, and the 14th Chief Justice of the United States. Warren liked to say the greatest reward for doing is the opportunity to do more. Mary, for transforming lives, the lives of the people you serve, the lives of your colleagues, your family, your friends, for relentlessly applying your formidable intellect and your keen sense of justice to problems that cause others to throw up their hands, and for doing it all with uncommon wisdom, gracious wit, and a loving touch, I'm proud to present you with the Ripple of Hope Award.